Hello, and thank you for joining Adobe here at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival. We are super excited to kick things off this year uh, with this conversation with director of Sundance Film Festival, John Cooper. I want to remind everybody that we are live streaming, so if you have questions for John, be sure to put them in the comments section and we'll address as many as possible. So, John, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> you're welcome, man. We're live. <laughs> we are so live. So watch my mouth. Is yes, that what exactly. You're watch okay. what you say. Be careful. Um, so first, I want to kick things off with, you know, Adobe's belief and, and why we feel it's so important to be here at the Sundance Film Festival is that everyone has a story to tell and that it's important for us to be empowering those stories to come mm -hmm. out. And nowhere is that more evident than at Sundance, both at the Film Festival yeah. as well as the Institute. So why is it important to empower every voice? What does creativity for all mean to you? I think it really means that, but it, it, I think it's important to know that there's other stories out there. First, you have to accept that there's other stories than the ones you know. And then it, what's the greatest part of what Sundance does, you go that transformation from there are stories, but they're also interesting and engaging and fun and they make for a great festival. So it's not just, we're not doing it because it's important. We're doing it because it's the right, not even the right thing to do. We're doing it because it's exciting and it's exciting for the audiences. So you'll see that. We've been doing that for years. That's our ethos as well. So, you know, there's no surprise that we're all <laughs> in the same game here with Adobe and Sundance. So. And at th this year at the festival, there are more diverse perspectives represented across both the films in the festival as well yep. as the filmmakers behind those films. Can you tell me about how you think that came to be? I think it was really organic. Nobody wants to hear about things just happening naturally, but I think you start a trend. You start a trend building audiences that are willing to accept other stories. And then it just starts to grow because what we look for is original, originality, creativity, freshness is a word that we use a lot. And when you start looking at other cultures, other people, other um, um, the other others, that's I like to talk about, all the other others, they have stories that are just innately more interesting. I mean, there was a time many years ago when, many, many years ago when just a coming out story for a, for a, a gay or lesbian person was so fresh and new, but now that's become like not so new. So other people are stepping up to the plate. They see that there's a journey to be had telling their story to the world. I also think it's really interesting that there was a time where like there was a story about a homosexual person yeah. and it was like, okay, now that story has been told, uh, let's yeah. move yeah. on. And that was a little bump. You have to get, <laughs> you get, you have to get past that. But yeah. I feel like we're moving into this time where we're looking at not just the diversity of each group, right, but right. the diversi diversity within that group and how really mm -hmm. each individual story is so diverse. And I, I know I'm going to jump really to a high level answer on that, but when you look back in during the like World War II and all those movies came out, there was escapism, right? Mm -hmm. Like musicals hit and then all these like crazy love stories and fairy everything was very happy and simple. That doesn't work any longer. I think what audiences want in this new to engage is honesty and authenticity and truth. And so I'm really seeing that the filmmakers that have that in them, they have the power, they have the story to tell that's authentic is more engaging and actually that's the new escapism. I think truth is a new escapism in this world that we're living in. Interesting. And why is it so important to give a platform for those stories? Because they're there and it's really I mean, yes, it's for the filmmakers themselves because we want to help them tell their stories, but it's really for the audiences. The audiences are hungry for this stuff. It's not, we're not making this up. We're not, and we're not selling medicine either. We're giving people what they want. You look at, and not just in film, but in TV too, the, the, the diversity, the creativity, the really unique um, sense of telling stories is like really strong right now. And as the independent film making community diversifies, mm -hmm. why is it so important for filmmakers to stay true to their voice and to really be authentic in the voice and the stories they're telling? And I don't even think that they have to all the time. I think actually they can make the story that they want to tell, mm -hmm. but I don't want to get in that rut either. They have to tell their story of their family or anything. Cause that's kind of boring too. Let them tell the stories they want. Let them go crazy. You know, I think, and what, what has changed is, they have the tools. It's no longer, I mean, that's what Adobe does and that's what we're there to help connect. It's like the tools are there. It's not, those are no longer getting in the way 
of being creative, which is a great thing, you know, and that's why I'm sure you guys have expanded. Now creativity for all is an important thing because now it can be for all. Yeah. You know? Well, you bring up a good point about um, the tools that Sundance is bringing to the filmmaking community um, because Adobe is a proud sponsor of Sundance Ignite, which right. has been going for quite a few years now. I know. Um, can Since you, 2015. Yep. And can you um, tell me a little, tell us the audience a little bit about what is Sundance Ignite and some of the hallmarks of what you right. know has been achieved through it. It started and it's my program. It started off with me complaining that I don't want to see the same audience here. I don't want to look out at that audience and have everybody just 10 years older in 10 years yeah, from now. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I want, we have to start thinking bigger about this. So we created all, first it created like a, a ticket package for young people to be able to come. Oh, it's for 18 to 25 year olds. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the fellowship, which is a really the deeper dive where you're taking, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 um, young filmmakers. It's a big process to get into that. But, but then you're really concentrating on them through a whole year. So, um, did I lose the thread of no, no, no okay. not at all. So first, let's talk about the ticket package. So right. what? Uh, tell me a little bit about what that means if you're buying a ticket. It's just, it's just the right night. price. It's just like I don't even know what the price is, but it's a lot cheaper than the other stuff. And you have to prove that you're that age. Yeah. So it's only for you. And then we add on other things that are sort of behind the scenes. So as every, maybe this group is the regular audience has seen this other movie. There's this other program where they're meeting a director or they're meeting mm -hmm. somebody from the industry. And we've been really concentrating on the director or industry person that's only one beat ahead of these. So we're not going for, you know, you're meeting the head of a company. You're going for that person that is in a company just one step past them. How did they get there? All that really valuable information. So there's special programming here at right. the festival yes, for yes, people who come yes, to ignite. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> in other words, yes. We and then the fellowship. Other... So yeah. the, tell us a little bit about. And the, the fellowship, fellowship is a you know it's a uh, application process. I think it's kicking off right after the festival. The new okay. the new submission. Process. So any of you young mm -hmm. filmmakers, hopefuls out there? Yes, sure absolutely. Because that's what that's what we're looking for right now. And then you you submit. You have to have a piece of work that you show. We take it a lot off of what you've already done yeah which is always a tricky thing because you want to almost meet the person but it's so impossible to meet all these yeah, people yeah. so um it's a good solid process and when we've been turning out really great talent i mean um i think eight even in the short time we've been doing it what eight eight films mm -hmm. eight fellows fellows have had films in the festival and there's four in this year so you see four before over those years now it's already four Plus a feature, which is even kind of an amazing And I think notion. Lance, who has the feature here, yes. was in the program like last year. Like <laughs> it hasn't even been that long for him. I know. I think I think what he used to for his to get in, it was like a small snippet of what he was working on. Okay. He's a driven guy. It's a documentary. It's all called Some Kind of Heaven. Some Kind of Heaven. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And um Cut on Premiere Pro. We loved that. Yes. <laughs> and um and it's playing it's the only documentary playing in the next section, which is, I can go into a whole longer yeah, story yeah, yeah. about that because it's so kind of inventive and sort of a different kind of film. And then there have also been fellows who have um, been interns at the labs, oh, at yeah. the Sundance Labs. Well, that's, a, that's part of the process. What's great about this program is we match the program to them. Instead of like, all right, now you get this and that, we get to know these young talent and and then we kind of try to craft so a lot of them do come to the labs during the summer it's an easy it's an easy matchup for us of course because mm -hmm. then you're there not only watching this these other filmmakers that are working on their feature films and we look back in time it was quentin tarantino and paul thomas anderson and filmmakers like that but then the mentor is above them so you're observing a lot of information being passed so we have um a question from the live stream okay um am i gonna like this person kenny diaz <laughs> I, I love kenny i mean kenny sounds <laughs> like um what movie premiering at the festival this year are you most uh, excited oh, about oh kenny I can't choose <laughs> um <laughs> or name no, a that, few. No, that, now that we're now that we're, we're starting the festival today in like yep. what three hours i yep. have to shave um <laughs> um i would say for me it's wendy Okay. Um, it's um, a film made by the same guy who did um, Beasts of the Southern Wild. Oh, wow, yeah. It's that style. has a lot of kind of this fantasy, exciting stuff in it. And it's the, the Wendy story of Wendy from Peter Pan. Oh, wow. Told in a very different way. Oh, 
really I just find it so beautiful, you know, the way I found Beasts. Beasts of the Southern Wild was one of my favorite Yeah, it's films. very, like, dream Dreamy state. Yeah. and just imaginative, and, and but but not in this dream state that's that's slow. It's very right. fast-paced since these kids, and they're so wild. It's like wild kids that don't want to grow up. Interesting. And that's probably one. Um, and, you know, there's others, of course. Yeah. Um, so... On that point, you know, mm. Adobe um, is also obviously Adobe's been a longtime sponsor of the both the Sundance Institute and the film festival. Um, and this year, we're really excited that it's the uh, to um, launch the inaugural year of women at Sundance Adobe Fellowship. Right, right. So, are there any uh, female identifying filmmakers that you're really excited about, or you know, ones to watch of at the course, festival um, this year? Um, well, Miranda July is back, and she's one she's of my wonderful. favorites. And I, it's her film. Her film is called Cajillionaire. And if you like Miranda July, you'll love this film. Um, she's just so um, inventive in in her stories, and I, I think that's one that's going to hit big. Um, there's um, um, oh, I forgot her name. Wait, Eliza Hitman. It on. Oh, I can't remember the title. Sorry. It's always been a tricky title for me. See, this is your time to say, go to the lineup, go to the lineup and lineup. check out. <laughs> it's in competition. It's one of the best made films I've actually ever seen. And she's she did. Um, see, this is where I go. This is where I go. Crazy. Okay. I have no. I have no short term memory right now. It's just well, with like mass. 200 plus projects in the. I know. That's what I can't imagine There's that you something, don't remember. It's it's the questions they ask you when you're getting questioned for. Um, an abortion clinic. Oh, wow. And, and that's why it's, it's a weird thing. It's rarely, sometimes. Always never. Always never. Yeah, that's the title. Right. There we go. Never. We yes. got to it. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to ask you how yes. you know all that. But. <laughs> um, a friend of mine is one of the producers <laughs> okay. on it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This film is so pure in its filmmaking. I don't know. It's like um, she's somebody that is just a true talent to me. Wow. Yeah. So what are ways that the industry at large can be more supportive to bring up um, mm. Women filmmakers. I well, there's a, there's things we do and people can there's the mentoring which is real. You know, it's um, it's something that I missed in my life. I never had mentors, and I look back and I see what the the the, the opportunities are and how it's become something real. Um, that and just financial, just supporting them. You know, it's um, it really gets down to that. Um, Taking a chance, I want financiers and I want the industry to take a chance. There's no fear. There should be no fear. The only fear in a product should be if they think it's right for them or it works. You should not be looking at what, what the gender or the or the race or the uh, sexual preferences of the person bringing that project. That needs to go away. Yeah. Because I think everybody knows that too. I have found that the industry is moving very fast. But you know they still have that pressure of making money, you know, which yep. is which is real. Yep. And that's why, um, it's but it's still that the little risk factor of taking a chance is is real, and that's where I, I think we're pushing people to like take the chance; it'll pay off. Yeah. And it does. You know, Ryan Coogler is a supreme example oh of that. You know, his career has been amazing. Mm -hmm. And Fruitvale was not an easy movie to get funded because it was a difficult movie, difficult difficult subject, and but he killed it. In the making of the film, Absolutely. so yeah. you know, so he proved it, and now he's you know on the road to everything. Yeah. You know, so. so you bring up um, <clears throat> mentorship both in terms of female filmmakers as well as this next generation of filmmakers. Right. And one thing that's really interesting about the Ignite program is it's it's about filmmakers who have they have stories to tell. They're right. they, you know yeah. they're they're, they're ready there. to tell those stories, right. and it sounds like part of it is like learn the business, learn how to yes. get people invested in you. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, because we talked a lot, you know, what you don't get in a film school, you know, because they just tend to concentrate more on the artistic side. And you, there While are... While important, you, obviously. You, of course, that's, that is it. But you've got to, um, you've got to understand the industry too. If you want to move, mm -hmm. you'll always move, but if you want to move faster and cleaner and get to your, your own destination... Um, I think that's important. That's the one thing we really concentrate a lot. Like, again, bringing industry and in, talking to the filmmakers when they do, they do a, 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 for the fellowship, they do a week in LA where we introduce them to a lot of people. They learn pitching. They learn um, the reality. Like, let's learn the reality of how you get a film made because mm -hmm. it is real. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So what do you think are the biggest 
sort of opportunities or advantages for the next generation of filmmakers that maybe filmmakers in the past. I think the audiences have changed for them and around them. So they're not overcoming that obstacle Mm -hmm. as much. I do think you can find like-minded people that will support you. There are like-minded people out there Mm -hmm. um, and working on TV and film. Um, So you're not going out there totally cold. And uh, there's there's a weird thing about confidence. A lot of what young filmmakers need is just confidence to be able to, what they don't realize is nobody's looking for them to be refined. What everybody is looking for them to be fresh. Mm. I always call ourselves vampires. We want them to come <laughs> into the room, the youth, <laughs> and, and make us and make us charged up again on why we're even doing our jobs. Mm. You know, and that's really like just concentrate on that. Be yourself. Be I love that. be the free, you know, freewheeling. We all love that in people, but all of a sudden everything is no. I have to be this, and it's not about that. It's like you have the story. Be that story. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think that the next generation of filmmakers can do to continue this push toward diversity in terms of the stories that are being told um, so that so that people who see them coming up right. believe that they they have an opportunity that they can as a director you have a lot of um, say in hiring people so take chance in your hiring put not put your money where your mouth is yeah. but put your energy where your mouth is if you're going to talk about your own yeah. diversity hire a diverse and filmmakers are doing that um, it doesn't have to be in some silly way. Just concentrate on that and take, again, look past um, unconscious bias into what, you know, what what the talent is. And you'll be surprised. You know, I find, you know, I've hired a lot of people at Sundance. They all turn into superstars and they come from the weirdest places. Right. You know, it's not like there's a there's a, a path for film programmers for festivals there is none but you look for that passion and working hard Mm. it's you go on a set and you're meeting people all the time you never know who you're meeting but if the your reputation comes out of somebody that shows up on time works hard um is always there always ready for a challenge that's a that's when i look to hire people that's what i'm looking for, for first and foremost you know yeah yep um, another question from the live stream. This is a zinger. Okay. Carmen Ortiz asks, what do you think of Four Good Days? I, I love it. It's a film. In it's a film. Well? Okay. It's a film by Rodrigo Garcia. Yeah. yeah. It stars Glenn Close and Mila Kunis. Did I pronounce that right? Kunis. 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 Yep. Um, Kunis. Yep. Um, it is uh, a difficult film, but Glenn Close is going to get nominated for Academy Award next year. For yeah, this film. Wow. it's um, it's it's actually one of my favorites. It's um, it's a mother dealing with a daughter that has an opioid addiction that is so past the oh my daughter might have a problem. It, she's way past it, and and she's she goes for it. They both go, for it. and a mom that has to be so cold and hard against every instinct in being a mother to hard, hard love, you know, for her tough love for this mm-hmm. daughter to survive. And mm-hmm. so it's about two survivors. And it's a really interesting, intriguing film. Yeah. Interesting. How exciting, too, that you mentioned the Academy Awards, that more and more Sundance films are I know straight to the top. We were very excited about um, Apollo 11 won both at the Eddies and at the PGA Awards. Right, but then it didn't get nominated, right? <clears throat> I know. What's that about? <laughs> <laughs> Um, that was my, my one like that was the shoe in for me that was uh, not even nominated it was the winner project. it was the winner in my head yeah, yeah. oh well but oh, um yeah. we we started kind of not so surprisingly more in the original uh screenplay that's i think uh-huh. our first nominations a long time ago mm-hmm. sundance films would get nominated in that category because there wasn't very much original work being supported in hollywood everything came from another movie you know how they we yeah, do that. Yeah. Um, but so that was it. But now it's grown into everything. And now it's directors and, you know, mm-hmm. you know, everything. Absolutely. So. so I don't know if you are aware of this, but um, the majority of the films here at the festival this year were cut on Premiere Pro. I did and, not see the numbers. Uh, I figure. Uh, 82% used Creative Cloud technology. So including After Effects, Photoshop, right. all that. Um, why do you think more and more independent filmmakers are choosing to use Adobe Tools? 
I think because they're good. Isn't that pretty much how everything works? <laughs> like you. <laughs> you don't use things that don't work. Right. <laughs> um, it, and it's, so it's like it's a natural selection and it happens fast. Maybe in the old days it used to be slower. Like people would try, but the work is out. You know, these filmmakers, when you're with them, that's all they talk about. What did you use? How did you use yeah. it? Was it good for you? you know, and then, so it, it spreads, quality spreads quickly. Yeah. That's it. It's, Quite simple, actually. Yeah. yeah. And how do you think the, the partnership between Adobe and Sundance has worked to empower more filmmakers to tell their stories? Well, I think it's in the programs that we that we commit to together. I think that's really it. Um, but it's it's also, you know, you can commit. A lot of partnerships can come together and they don't work. Mm -hmm. You know, one side says it's doing one thing and they don't. I mean, we both, I think, are, are organizations and companies, however you want to call mm -hmm. us. Because we're an organization, and you're a company, but um, we are not for profit. Um, that I think that we believe in something and common and, goals. Yeah, common, common goals. Beliefs. And when you meet, it's from the top down. Because I don't, I don't meet a lot of the, the the people in Adobe, but I do meet like you know people that we're talking to who are controlling these programs, mm -hmm. putting these ideas up, and they're all like minded, and yeah. that's and that makes it easy. Absolutely. Yeah. So the burning question uh -huh. that we're going to end on okay. is what advice do you have for young filmmakers who are hopeful to one day be premiering here at Sundance? I kind of, this always switches around in my head. And I think it's, and lately I've seen this happen because it becomes a little bit of a disease. Don't watch other people your age and what they're getting. <laughs> Man, in it the doesn't time of matter. social media, that is I know, a it's, tough and it's making one. it harder. Yep. Don't worry about it. Your time will come. Just relax, stay true to it. And, you know, that could also be don't give up. Um, and if it's not working, look at what you're look at what you're doing. If you have a script, you've got another script in you. You don't have one story, so get another script. Just keep working. And and I don't want to say plugging away because that sounds tiring. But, um, you know, inspire away, like keep, I have noticed this in a lot of the Ignite fellows, they have a lot of things going at once. You know, it's not, I'm just working on this. I have another idea and that's strong too. And they found out the ways how, and one thing we do a lot is about how to talk about those. Mm -hmm. Because as you see with me, that's not even my strong point all the thing. It's like, I got an idea, but I can't get mm -hmm. it out. And the people that do get it out are the ones that, that practice talking about what they want to work on, you know? Yeah. It can take just a little practice and a little thought behind it. And because you might be at a party and you have to have that party pitch. Yep. And then you have the bigger pitch if you're going into someone's office. Then you have the pitch that changes because that person's eating lunch and sounds seems like they don't even want to talk to you, you know? But the mm -hmm. only reason they let you in the room is because you're an Adobe fellow, yeah. you know? And so it's like that too. It's like figure it out. Don't get bothered by it. But really don't look at what other people are getting. Because it's all going to be different. If mm -hmm. I did that in my life, I would have been, I would have been, I don't know where I would have been. <laughs> nowhere, nowhere big. And that actually sparks another uh, question that I had for you. Like, what do you think about, you know, unlike, say, even 10 years ago, there's a, there's a platform that people can be telling stories all the time and finding audience. Right. That with YouTube and with sort of social media platforms, right. you can be you can be getting your stories out there and getting feedback and right. finding an audience. Right. How has that changed sort of the approach to, to filmmaking I say, and storytelling? Yeah, look at those stories. But you know what? It always gets down to talent is talent. I mean, and don't, if you have a really good idea, don't rush it either. You kind of have to figure out what is the best platform for this thing that I'm trying to do is it who, what's the one last year it was like little 10 minute webisodes that told this bigger story that was like perfect it was oh, all about cool. marriage um I think it was Stephen Frears and um I forget anyway it's not it's so important but look at look at with all the different mediums and think what's the one that you think is right because mm -hmm. that's you're probably pretty correct in your own assessment um um I don't want to get filmmakers away from I know it's this is since it's my last year here I can say this stuff, but don't always always think about this the theatrical experience. It mm. might not be right for this film. That's changing too. Look at the platforms. Look at these other platforms that are more diverse in how they get films out and mm -hmm. and run that and pay attention to your audience. You can be building your own audience and people who know you and don't just think there's this magical audience out there. 
get their emails, talk to them directly. Mm -hmm. People want audience, general audience on the world want to to have a direct dialogue with artists now yeah. more than they did. Absolutely. You know? And I feel like creating in a vacuum is not going to improve <laughs> right, what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. There are these platforms where you could, I'm reminded of Selah and the Spades last oh, right, year. There's those right. platforms where you can like workshop your characters, mm -hmm. workshop, you mm -hmm. know, not necessarily the story that you're wanting to tell in your film, but see if they're resonating with audiences. And I'm, and I'm, I think you could, we're working a little bit with Adobe on this too, and I'm so failing in my job right now. Because we're, we did this thing called Collab, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a teaching tool. It's like taking all of our knowledge around mentorship and teaching and trying to get it in online versions. And we're learning. And it's growing fast. And what I found amazing, I was in Beirut doing this kind of talk to young filmmakers and somebody, and then there's Collab because I've already been <laughs> doing this stuff and and taking all these, I don't know if they're called classes, but but like you know instructional things and dealing with this stuff and he's in beirut and like so the world is opening up and, absolutely you know, it's i i can hardly get my head around it i'm not even a good way good person to look at the future i know it's there and that's my step and then you know it's kind of amazing what people it's all about the opportunities they really have that they don't know they have yep adobe is also that the services and and um creative tools. creative tools right thank you are there. It's not that hard to get those. The hard part is getting your story. You yeah. know. Well, thank you so thank much, you. John. Thank you for joining us. And thank you all for joining us. Stay tuned for more with Adobe at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival. Mm -hmm.